In today's video, I'm going to be trying to survive 100 days in the Arctic. I have three objectives. First, craft a stage three mountain cabin. Second, eliminate Pandora, the king of the icy mountains. And finally, eliminate Tusky, the leader of the South Pole. Can I survive stranded in the Arctic? Stay tuned to find out. Do you want to fight the custom bosses you see in our videos? Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $5 a month, you'll have full access to our exclusive maps and private SMP server, which features our custom bosses and much more. Check it out, it's linked in the description below. Whoa, Mount Everest is a lot bigger in person. All of our training has led us to this moment. Let's get to it. Well, here we go, this will be a journey. Do you hear that? Avalanche, run! No, 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 no. Ugh, where am I? Forest? Where, where's Forest? With no sight of Forest, I knew I needed supplies if I was gonna survive in the Arctic. I started by gathering wood and some food. I knew I was lost in the Arctic, but take a look at this terrain. It's absolutely gorgeous with this massive tree here. In the evening of day one, I gathered this remaining coal and buried myself in a wall for the rest of the night. In the morning, I decided to cook up the rest of my pork chops and traveled around getting a bit more food, and I ran into a pack of bison. I'm gonna leave these guys alone. On day four, I found a great position to build my base on top of a hill. I went ahead creating the base out of spruce wood, and I created a little farm area on the back. I then decided to make a big watchtower on top of one of these massive trees. You can see quite a lot from up here, hopefully I don't fall down. For the next three days, I traveled around and searched for a cave. I definitely needed some armor if I was going to survive in the Arctic. I ended up finding a little cave and mined some of the coal, decided to create some torches, and headed right into this dark, mysterious cave. I started out by mining some iron and got a little bit more coal. Once smelting down the iron, I made a chest plate and an axe. Then I heard something. What the heck was that? I traveled down the cave to see what that noise was and there was a light, what looked to be a campfire. As soon as I approached, it looked like there was an escape route leading all the way up the staircase. I ended up going to the top and found torches that led all the way over to the ocean. Whoever this was, they must have had a boat to get away. Traveling back down into the cave, I found a chest with iron, a shield, and some cooked pork chops. I disassembled what he had left of his base and I created some iron leggings, boots, and a helmet. I I then took the next two days to travel back to my base, and when I arrived, I opened the door, finding a sign with some weird symbols on it. What the heck does that even mean? I then climbed to the top of my lookout tower to try and find whoever was here. After looking around, I didn't see anyone. I spent the next couple days traveling around looking for some more life. On day 14, I found myself walking by these massive ice mountains, and close by I found an igloo, and suddenly I got jumped by some sort of Eskimo. I tried to juke him by turning around, and when he hit me, it did four hearts of damage. This was not a fight I wanted to be a part of. Spent the remainder of day 14 running away, and I found this big rock structure and found a good spot to hide as I watched the Eskimo running by, praying he doesn't find me. Couple more days go by, and in the distance, I see a massive of structure what's looked to be on a big mountain. Why is this mountain filled with netherrack and nether brick? What's going on? Once I got to the top, it all made sense. It was some sort of massive nether volcano. What was this doing in the overworld? Before heading into the cabin, I had to eliminate this blaze. Once entering the cabin, I eliminated one more blaze and then harvested all the materials from the interior. For the remainder of the night, I eliminated the magma cubes and blazes. And while I was traveling back to my base, I had to walk past the Eskimo and I saw him in the distance fishing. So I did what anyone would do. I went under the water as he walked by me. I waited for him to walk into his house and then I surfaced and ran right by him. That was a little bit sketchy. And on day 22, I finally returned to my base and deposited the rest of my loot. My next objective was to gather the essential supplies that I'm gonna need to craft a stage one igloo. I combined snowballs to make snow blocks, and afterwards it creates packed snow. And then I put the packed snow in a circular shape with a torch and it creates a level one ice hut. As you can see, I threw out the ice hut and it started building and formed my stage one ice hut. As you can see, it's a pretty cute little base and it even has some sugar cane on the side. I continued for the next couple of days gathering all of my supplies and moving them all the way to my ice hut. After removing all of my stuff, for the rest of the day, I created a farm. I needed a consistent food source. 
As you can see, I finished it up and even added some sugarcane at the front. I went out exploring for the next few days and I found a pack of mammoths. It looked like they were just jumping around in the water until one of them randomly died. As I was watching from the distance, a mammoth charged at me, so I got the heck out of there. On day 31, I was roaming around and I saw this wall and it looked very unusual. It was just a big layer of cobblestone and when I walked up to it, it was an entrance. As soon as I entered, I got approached by polar bears and they immediately started jumping on me. Holding up my shield prevented me from taking a lot of damage and I was able to eliminate one of the polar bears and with just another hit, I killed the other one. It seems like these polar bears tend to hibernate in caves. We should be more careful when entering caves from this point on. Anyways, I secured the rest of the area and it looked like this place had been abandoned. For the next few days, I traveled all the way back to my base, arriving on day 36. I dedicated the next five days to caving, and I was walking by all these crazy looking trees. I made my way to the depths of the cave and started mining as many diamonds as I could possibly find. Over the course of the five days, I found 20 diamonds, and it took me three days to return back to base. I crafted a diamond helmet, leggings, pickaxe, and axe. For the next couple of days, I gathered all essential supplies needed for crafting our stage 2 ice house. I used iron ingots and a crafting table to make a giant crafting table. I then combined packed snow with water buckets to make packed ice, and then I crafted up the stage 2 ice house. In the morning of day 46, I found a good spot to build the ice house, and there we go, it started building and just appeared in front of me. This thing is freaking awesome. After creating the stage 2 house, I decided to build a little dock outside of my house to go ice fishing. I think the dock came out pretty cool. After the fishing dock was completed, I decided I wanted to make another wheat farm. I think that turned out pretty nice. Anyways, it's time to check out the inside. It looks like we have a TV room leading to a garage, which then has a little kitchen and a storage space under the stairs. And the second floor, we got this little disco room. I don't know if anyone's into dancing. And then I found myself a little balcony that's pretty nice. And it seemed to have a couple rooms inside as well. Leaving my house, I realized I still had no potions, so I headed back to the nether volcano in hopes to find some nether wart and soul sand, and I did hiding on the side. I eliminated a few more blazes and worked my way down, farming all of the soul sand and nether wart. Returning back to my base on day 53, I mined out the entire kitchen table area and created an area to grow nether warts and decided to make this my brewing area as well. A little armory in the garage and in the disco room, I turned it into enchantment room. I left my base exploring for another mine for four days, and while I was exploring for another mine, I found a big group of deer. They looked pretty sweet. They had blue horns. Anyways, I went back down into the mines and found the remaining diamonds I needed to craft my diamond chest plate and boots. While I was returning home, I found this place and it said Pandora on the top of my screen. And when I walked over the cave, I found a massive polar bear. After drinking my strength and speed, I charge directly in straight for the Pandora. He hits me once and my whole screen goes red and launches me in the air. This was going to be a challenging fight. I charged back in and he smashed the ground again, causing me to use another health pot. After healing, I went back in and looked at my health and I was back down to half HP. This thing does insane damage. I charge back in for the final time against the Pandora. He smashes the ground and I get the last hit eliminating the Pandora. It dropped polar bear fur, which I'm going to use to make polar bear armor. Three days of traveling later, I arrived back at my base. I started by combining my diamond armor with the polar bear fur, creating polar bear armor. I also combined a diamond sword to create a polar bear blade. Then I went up to the disco room and fully enchanted all of my armor and blade. As you can see, this polar bear armor and blade looks freaking insane. I spent the next four days, you know, traveling to this Esco Mo's house. You remember earlier he tried to kill me? Well, it was time to get my revenge. I went ahead into his chest, stole his saddle, and the rest of his loot. As I walked outside of the igloo, I looked both ways and got jumped, doing four hearts of damage in one hit. What kind of weapon is that? It does insane damage. Already going through three of my health pots, I block his hit and get a couple good hits in on him. It seemed like every time he was hitting me, I was losing nearly half of my health. I blocked another one of his hits, and after that, I got a couple good swings and eliminated the Eskimo. It took me a few days to travel back to base. Once I was back home, I decided to spend
spend the next couple of days gathering enough supplies to create my stage three ice mansion. After gathering my packed snow, I made some more packed ice and decided to start creating my stage three ice mansion. And just like that, with two diamonds on the bottom, I created the ice mansion. Wasn't sure how big this was gonna be, so I went pretty far away and threw it. And suddenly my screen froze and a massive mansion appeared. This thing is ridiculous. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying so far. Well, as anyone would, I wanted to see what this mansion had to offer, and I walked in, and this place was freaking huge. Look at this, we even have a balcony overlooking our other base. Also went ahead and created another wheat farm here and moved my nether wart farm onto the balcony. I have a little chest area here for all my loot and created another wheat farm. For the next few days, I put torches all around the mansion and created new potions. Six days of traveling through the Arctic and I finally found a sign of life, a massive lighthouse. When I got closer, text on my screen came up that said Tusky. I had no idea what that meant. As I got closer to the White House, I realized it was a massive walrus boss and after drinking my potions, it started spitting slimes at me. I also just realized that there's a penguin on top of the walrus's head. I charged directly at Tusky and it launched out even more slimes and then I managed to get a couple hits on him and he knocked me way back. Not only did this boss do a lot of damage, but it kept launching slimes at me and slowing me in the corners. I saw an opportunity and I took it. I got five big damage hits on him. As I was blocking my shield, it knocked me back in the wall, knocking me all the way down to half HP. I tried splashing a potion, but it missed. Then he knocked me against the wall again, and I got stuck in the corner while being surrounded by slimes. I managed to wiggle my way out of the room with one health potion left. I ate food to regenerate and ran back in. As I tried to get a few more hits, he knocked knocked me in the air, making me use my final health potion. While I was eating, he knocked me way back into the water. As I was regenning, I ran back in and he launched me into the ocean. I looped around to the front of the lighthouse to catch Tusky and the penguin off guard, and just like that, we were able to eliminate Tusky and the little penguin dude. One like equals one prayer for that little penguin dude. Also, look at all these freaking slimes it spawned. I went into the back of the room and found a chest with a penguin's bane. This must have been the penguin sword. I spent the next four days returning back to my base and headed into the disco room to enchant the penguin's bane. Now that I'm all geared up and healthy, I headed back to Mount Everest and decided to climb. I see why they call it Mount Everest. This thing literally takes forever to climb up. And finally, after days of climbing, I could see my campfire way down at the bottom. It seems that I have reached the peak of Mount Everest. Painful? I'm glad you survived. Yeah, that avalanche came out of nowhere. Now that we both made it to the peak, let's go home while we're still alive. Make sure you go check out Forest video linked in the description. We both had different objectives and fought different bosses. Thanks for watching and take care.